Let's help. A sick bay Star Trek veteran. Today on, yeah, Trekland Tuesdays live with me, Dr. Trek. It's Larry Nemechek <laughs> coming at you from the heart of Trekland right through Portal 47 for some clarity, sanity, and the big picture in all things Star Trek. And brought to you in part by all of these fine Patreons of mine in the TTL Club and the TTL Live Wires. I'll tell you more about that in a little bit, but thanks to all you guys and gals for your help, because once again, it's Trekland third Tuesday. That means we've got a 24-hour flash deal coming up, so everybody come on in, get, get, get comfy wherever you are in this crazy turn the corner on the pandemic days. Still no fresh Star Trek, lots of news out there, but something to talk about. We got a great show. Hey, I'm going to talk here on the soapbox for a little bit. If you're watching us live, yay, you can jump into the chat. We've got our regular TDLers here. Um, if you're new, just pull up a chair and join in, right? I won't get to the chat until after the midway break. I'm going to talk here for a second, and then we'll take a break, and all you live folks will still be with us. But if you're watching later on YouTube, um, that'll be the end of it because things have to stay short for YouTube. But on Facebook and live, we'll see. Hey, I'll come back. We'll do some ratings. We'll look at what's going on with the Parrot Analytics ratings on Star Trek shows and in general. And then we'll dive into the chat. And along the way, I'll tell you about this month's third Tuesday 24-hour hot deal. And uh, we'll see what we get into after that, okay? But first, yes, today, welcome, everybody. I wanted to talk. Look, uh, great news that. Uh, Star Trek uh, Strange New Worlds, <laughs> I love how things leak, is uh, happening. Uh, they're getting filming going up in Toronto where things are a little more tightened down with regards to the pandemic than they are here in LA. So LA is still waiting on Picard to start up behind the schedule that was planned, but that's, that's the way the virus crumbles these days. So good luck to everybody up in Toronto way on Strange New Worlds. And uh, we hear through another uh, slip on a podcast, it's not even a Star Trek podcast, um, about, uh, about the cast. Yes, yes, the outrageous O'Connor is going to be back. Uh, Bill Campbell is going to be reprising his voice, apparently, as an animated voice on Star Trek Prodigy, which slipped out this week. Nothing official from CBS, but actors don't usually say those kinds of things unless they're for real, and then they get yelled at later in private. But that was fun. So there's little drips and drabs of Star Trek news out there. We're all just kind of waiting to see what the year brings us. Everybody's doing their own thing. Good on that. So you know what? Um, I had a topic kind of scheduled for today, but something else has come up. And I just want to, something that I don't do often. In fact, I've never done on Tuesdays Live here. Uh, I want to talk about um, a, a, a help out campaign, a GoFundMe. Um, and here it is. The name Michael Braveheart might not might mean much to you Treklanders, but uh, this is a picture from his GoFundMe site. He's having some medical issues, and I don't know Michael closely. I've talked to him off and on over the years about being a Portal 47 guest for the Portales, um, but more than that, just recently, uh, he lives in New York now, and he's had some medical issues off and on, which is ironic given that all the years he stood next to Dr. Crusher in the sick bay of the Enterprise D, and even the E for the purposes of first contact as well as generations. Uh, my non speaking nurse was always there beaming in when nobody needed to talk. And then boom, along comes Nurse Ogawa when we need a speaking nurse. But uh, Michael was there, uh, came in the second season, was there the last six years of the series, the first two movies. And along the way of just having a conversation with him, turns out he's had some recurring health issues, especially cardiac issues. Uh, he's made his own way. He's given acting classes in New York. He's done fine until the double whammy of medical issues and the pandemic. And I don't know what it is, but it's when... We have these systems, they've taken a beating in recent years, but when we have these systems and these supposed safety nets for folks and people still fall through the cracks through no fault of their own and they have issues like this, 
So, hey, um, yeah, I'm just going to keep this short and sweet today. Um, there's a group called Friends of Michael Braveheart on GoFundMe. Uh, I don't have the URL. You can, um, but you could look it up, right? GoFundMe <laughs> and look up Michael Braveheart, just the way it sounded. Uh, he has a very modest goal here. He's got just has a three thousand dollar to help with some of these heart issue medical issues. Uh, he just had a bit of a relapse a couple of weeks ago, but he's in there fighting it. Um, he's uh, worried about losing his apartment in New York in the middle of not being able to work, even with the help he can get from the pandemic assistance. So uh, he has a fairly modest goal of three thousand. Um, he's raised three sixty. It's been up for a few months. I talked about it about a, before the holidays. It, it got a little bit of a spurt um, from somewhere. So we're through the holidays. We're through the elections. We're through the inauguration. We're through the insurrection. We're through the impeachment. We're through hopefully getting some more COVID help for everybody, personally, business-wise, up and down the line. Um, we're feeling a little more settled. And so of all the things I know are taking your attention, like I said, I don't often do this, but... And I don't even know Michael that well, but I've gotten to know him a little bit. And it just just pisses me off when things fall through the cracks. So um, that's it for today, guys. Uh, we, we have we're all so rattled right now. And I see so many, you know, Facebook lets people uh, put a put a good cause attached to their birthday to to to, um, to publicize that. Um, we're all doing what we can. It's nice to be able to help out a little bit where you can, when you can. Um, in the past, I've done fundraisers for, it's, I know it doesn't seem as dire, but it's still for our greater good, our greater sanity. I've done fundraisers for the Will Rogers Ranch Foundation. Um, I, when I've had charity pieces in charity auctions, that's where my charity share went. So I just wanted to say that today. I just wanted to put that out there. I'm in the great wide world of Star Trek fandom. I feel like five bucks from hundreds of people that enjoyed, you know, the next generation, the folks who enjoy the medical side of Star Trek, the folks who enjoy all the extras and the behind the scenes people who have populated Star Trek over the years. And I know there's lots of good people with lots of good causes, but here's one case where I just feel like a lot of a little will do a lot of good on a fairly modest goal. So that's a shout out uh, for Michael uh, for his GoFundMe. Uh, just had another setback. Um, I think he's doing fine. It's just uh, I think he's got more stress over life issues than he's having um, with his medical because that was not a very a huge, huge goal, just a 3,000. He's raised a little over 10% of it. So let's see if we can – I know of all the things attracting attention, of all the things to grab our – our, our needed focus and attention. That's one more thing. But if we can focus just for five minutes on that, that would be great. Um, like I said, it just, I don't know about you, but it just drives me crazy when things fall through the cracks that shouldn't have to happen that way. But then again, that's America. There's so much of that that happens here. And so many of you guys watching from around the world, uh, hey, I know you Brits, you Germans, everybody's got their issues, but I know Canadians, this is what astounds me about half the country here is how the rest of the world looks at the Americas, about the U.S. and says, why are you all still doing with this? And oh, my God, your people are putting up GoFundMe drives to help with their medical bills. It is so not a thing. In the 90s, when things were shifting around and I was working for European bosses, for, for Germans and for Brits, and I was asking for some kind of a stipend for healthcare like you would do with an American boss. And they just looked at me like I was crazy. Like, like what? <laughs> like, what? I mean, it was just not in the paradigm. And, um, yeah, I'm. that's a whole other topic. I'm tired of the U.S. being a third world country on this one issue for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. But we're finally inching there. We're finally inching there. You know, there was a time when paving roads for the public good was considered... Well, today we'd say socialism. There was a time when the government paying for the ambulance service was not a thing. Private companies did that. I mean, it's just been an evolution, people. We've gotten denser in our population. I hope we don't get denser in our brain capacity. But things evolve. And currently it's health care. Uh, Mayberry, no, but this was not an issue. This was not an issue 
uh, 100 years ago, much less 50 years ago. Uh, the last 20, 30 years, it's very much an issue. And we have the density of population to make it make economic sense now. We have delivery systems like this, much less just the proximity uh, factor is going down so much in all but the most rural places. And it, healthcare is an issue there too, like so many other things. I'm so mad about the rural areas of the country missing out on Wi-Fi, on healthcare services. Boy, I didn't mean for this to turn into... A, <laughs> I'm just going to fill out a couple of minutes talking about some things that contribute to the point of why, why we even have people with medical and other life issue GoFundMes. Anyway, this was one of our longtime trucklanders. Uh, I just remember watching Star Trek back in the day and watching the recurring people. And Michael, I had no idea of his name until I got access to call sheets, right? Working on the companion and working on my annual concordances. But uh, those familiar faces that you saw every week, every week, and then celebrating when they got a name, because Michael eventually became Ensign Martinez, who got promoted to Lieutenant Martinez by the time of the two movies. Uh, you know, being a male nurse and all of that, uh, you, you celebrate those. You celebrate that as a fan watching a show week in and week out. You're rewarded for your continuity and you want to reward them for their continuity. Anyway, um, if you can do something for his little simple GoFundMe, it would be great. I think he could really use it after the setback of the last couple of weeks. Again, almost as much, um, uh, financial and stress as, uh, with the heart too, but it's all in there together. Okay, I don't often do that, guys and gals, but I just felt the need to do that today and uh, and with an acknowledgement that I feel like we're slowly coming out of this pandemic. I can't wait till we can have live events again and see each other. We have done amazingly, as we've been talking about here the last year, we've done amazing things here in fandom and in the culture about keeping ourselves sane and connected for business, for schools, for religious worship, and yes, for our mental health and comradeship here. Uh, of course, uh, some of us have been doing this for a few years pre-pandemic. This is just the way we talk to our audiences, or we were able to bring service to a lot of people, like with the Portales. Uh, anyway, uh, hey, I don't know if I've stirred anything up there and anything I've gotten to. Um, somebody, industrious, may even, I don't have it here handy. I guess I could put it in the chat here myself. Uh, I mean to put this up at my page and put it somewhere where it can kind of stay with the link. Uh, maybe I can do this here. Maybe, maybe. Boom, it is now in the chat under my name of Restream IO. But there you go. Um, most of all, though, I'm just looking forward to being back. Hey, there's some things brewing. Um, we're coming up to fake con season virtual. Um, just had a wonderful uh, talk, uh, uh, David and Lolita had Andre Bermatis and Brandon Braga last Saturday under Chase's, uh, umbrella virtually to talk about, uh, a nice Voyager throwback and all is a way of publicizing the upcoming Voyager documentary and, uh, the, the, um, Indiegogo campaign that they're having. So, you know, there's, there's lots of things to spend our hard won, hard earned bucks on or our, Lifeline money coming from whatever end of the government's helping us get through pandemic if we need it. Um, so I know it may not be the biggest of times, but it is a new year, year and we're feeling a little bit of renewal. I know also, and don't let me forget this, that the whole midsection of the country is freezing with temperatures. Uh, yeah. And so much of the grid is overtaxed. So much of my homies in Oklahoma and way down to even, yes, Texas uh, are without power. So I don't even know how many of our regular folks today are able to join in with us. Who's got the chipmunks running on the battery drive in the hamster cage? Um, I don't know. I don't know. But I just know that things are dire. Uh, I know things are blowing up. There's a lot of questions being asked about how the grid, how Texas's grid is segmented off from the rest of the country. And there are a lot of issues that I hope is this country finally casts an eye forward instead of so much navel gazing backward. If we finally move forward and start modernizing some of these aspects of society, uh, some of it very techie and hardcore hardware, not just our soft services that, um, of course, you know, climate change, but 
but all of these things, we've had these crises like the pandemic and now like this Arctic weather um, and historic lows that are exposing issues that need to be. I mean, yeah, I know, I know. If we just had a weather modification net, if we could just have the RISA of the future right now, that would just be wonderful. Uh, but we're not quite there yet. We're not quite there yet. And I don't know what's going to race along first, transporters, warp drive, or uh, weather mod. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. Having the transporters would be nice so we can go to all the ne nicely, newly beautified places around the world thanks to the weather modification net. We'll see. I'm, I'm being kidding. Hey, guys, um, thanks for indulging me this week, this week especially. Uh, I just wanted to have a soft sell, a soft announcement there about uh, remembering Michael's condition. And, you know, if it makes us think about uh, so much of our society is so still far behind that Star Trek of the 23rd, 24th century. Um, yeah, uh, we have the Bell riot riots in two years. Uh, I would be fine if we broke canon and somehow avoided the Bell riots, much less World War III. Uh, I really would. It's still like the Vulcans here, though, in 2061. That would be 2063. That would be great. So anyway, hey, I'm going to take a break here now. Just a couple of reminders that it is the third Tuesday. Every month on the third Tuesday, I give you a 24-hour flash deal. So hey, this one is a golden oldie. I'm bringing it out of the closet. Just 24 hours, okay? Things do feel brighter, but a little uncertain. So hey. If you enjoy the way I talk, if you enjoy the Trekland point of view here, that it's not the same old, same old everywhere, uh, we've kind of barely scratched the surface today. We actually do geek out on Star Trek and all my projects. And one of them that's really the most in-depth, that's been connecting people around the world for five and a half years now, is Portal 47. And this is the Corona special, the uh, Corona time simple simple sample cure from last year. It's basically buy two months and get a third free with with an all-year perk to it, okay, with the annual perks, because usually it's a 12-year package. Anyway, um, you can still go to three for two, simple three for two. That URL is still alive. The link doesn't work, but you can go there, look at it, and then uh, reach out to me on Twitter or Facebook. And in the next 24 hours, I didn't want to reconnect all the links. But this is still working. You can read all about it. You can go over and look at portal47.net. Okay? That's good until 3 p.m. Pacific tomorrow. Okay? Okay. That's our third Tuesday special. And once again, hey, I want to really thank, really thank all our TTL folks, our Patreons this week. Uh, Blaze K, Robin Wilson, Lawrence Todd, Anna Marie Siegel, Blake Arledge, Justin Porteous, and Nathaniel Robinson. And our live wires who are getting the shout out plus access to the first couple of years of Portal 47 behind the scenes interviews. So yes, thank much. Rusty Harold, Jared Cooper, Halbjord Gunn Johnson, Eli Irvin, Jalen Bullock, Gary Williams. I didn't fix this again. Robert McLean, Dan Leckie, and a super big live wire to Casey Shafsky. Thanks so much, guys. If you're interested in that, at the end of the month is when Patreon makes the sweep to Bill. I have a very simple one. Some folks, some creators have a complicated, perk-filled Patreon system. This is just to help with me with my multi-streaming. So I just have a simple five and ten dollar patreon.com slash Trekland Live. Uh, you can go check out all kinds of creators there at Patreon. Okay. Otherwise, yes, it's Tuesday. We had another the Trek Files drop. Uh, wherever you get your podcasts, uh, on Facebook is where we also give you the paper of the week, our documents right out of Gene's files this week. Lolita Fajo, my longtime friend and Star Trek colleague, uh, is on. Um, she's involved with the Voyager documentary too, but we've got writing critiques Gene wrote to two of his buddies' early scripts in 1989, which is awesome to read his comments and then compare that to, say, the writer's critiques and the open submission policy that Lolita ran for so many years under Michael Piller and Jerry Taylor um, through most of her tenure in the Berman era. So that's up right now at the Trek Files. I'd love for you to come over. I'd love for you to come over and uh, like the Facebook page while you're there and check all that out. And then, of course, Saturday, we'll be back for another Life Support Live. Dr. Trek and Dr. Ali 
One of us is a real doctor as we go boldly through uncertain times. 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. It's live. Yep, that's 6 p.m. UK time, 10 p.m. Central Europe. Um, I hope some of the grief of this week is lifted by then. But if, once again, so many folks have stepped up here in the pandemic time to, to keep us connected, this is our way of doing that, too. Um, we have a theme every week. We geek out on Trek and a little bit of mental health tips for you every day, too. We have a special show coming up week from Saturday on the 27th. We're going to have a watch along and a couple of guests. So I'm going to leave you a little bit in surprise just to tease that on Saturday the 27th. But we'll be there the 20th too. Um, come over to that page on Facebook and help us pick the theme every week. See what's going on. Enjoy a good laugh. <laughs> Enjoy a little mental health rest. Otherwise, guys, hey, uh, Thank you. If you're on YouTube with us, please like and subscribe to YouTube. That's my Twitter handle, just Larry Nemechek. If you're with us on Facebook as usual, it's Larry Nemechek's Trekland there and on Instagram. And if you want the full-blown address for Portal 47, it's portal47.net. I urge you to check it out. I can't believe it's been five and a half years. This fall will be our sixth anniversary. Can you believe that when we have open house? Guys and gals, Thanks for indulging me with that shout out from Michael Braveheart's uh, GoFundMe. Uh, thanks for indulging me uh, ranting a little bit about um, some of the things we still need to fix in this country. I know everyone's got problems around the world, and I'm very, very thankful for our global, our global Trek fans that join us from wherever you are. Um, join me in thinking about our Heartland folks that are really, really suffering not just with this cold and insane wind all the way down into the south, but exposing some of the cracks in our infrastructure. And yeah, it happens once in a blue moon, but that's of small comfort to people who are starving and trying to fight being frozen to death and cut off on power dealing with generators and all of that kind of thing. Transportation, mail delivery through the heart to the middle of the country is really disrupted in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. So, uh, so, plenty of good reason, as always, to stay well, do all the smart stuff, folks. Stay woke, and by that I mean check your sources for the information you're getting, and keep your eyes wide open, still, and most of all, trek well, everybody.